Hey right guys, Trish Munches Joe here, and today we're going to be talking about everything that I've watched and played in the month of May. I'm actually doing it this earlier than typically, like I get halfway through the month and then I'm like, oh this is what I watched last month, but uh, now it's the 3rd of June, so I'm, <laughs> I'm actually getting it a little bit early. Film and show wise, I did a lot more than I think last month, but game wise, I think I kind of lacked in May. So we'll just go through the games quickly, and it's literally three games and one of them, two of them I've mentioned already, but Life is Strange 2, I've started playing that, I did episode one, which I really, really enjoyed, um, and I'm going to go through more of that on Twitch, I'm going to finish that game, because I haven't, yeah, obviously I've got another four episodes to do, uh, but I did episode one of that, and Captain Spirit, which was the DLC uh, part of it, and I really enjoyed it, I love Life is Strange 1, so it made sense to do the, the second part as well, and yeah, we'll see what kind of what the rating I give that when I've done episode five. But good start with that game. Then Doom Eternal, which I mentioned last time as well, but finally platinum that. Um, I spoke a lot about Doom Eternal anyway in the last one and another video as well. Uh, very good game. The online was atrocious and it was a grind to get that platinum, but finally did it. So that was my 78th platinum for Doom Eternal. And then Final Fantasy VII, which I've mentioned before. I'm just continuing to go through that and near the end now, I'm very close to the end. All right, so that that's the games. It's, like I said, I've mentioned two of them already and one of them I've not even finished, but it's just Final Fantasy is taking up so much time and Doom Eternal took, took a lot longer than I thought it was going to to get the Platinum. For seasons of TV shows, uh, early May, we obviously had Westworld Season 3, which I gave an 8 out of 10 for. I think nowhere near as good as Season 1, and kind of thinking of that rating, I might even take it down to like a 7.5 or something. I don't know, or, or like a 3 or th a three and a half, even out of 5, I guess I would say. Because I really enjoyed it, but I just think of the level of what Season 1 was on. And it just wasn't even close to being on that level. So I changed my rating from an 8 or a, a 4 out of 5 to a 3.5 out of 5. It's just, it was good. I enjoyed it, but just not even close to being what season one was. Then on May the 7th, we finished both Riverdale season four, uh, which I gave a five out of 10 for, so a two and a half out of five rating. Um, an improvement from season three, <laughs> and that's saying a lot to say, it's a two and a half out of five rating. Uh, it had some okay storylines in there, you could tell they were trying a lot more than they did with season three, but there's just still, still so much shit going on that it, again, seasons one and two actually felt like good teen dramas, and then three and four just seems like an absolute joke. Uh, so yeah, I stick with my two and a half out of five rating for Riverdale season four. Then on the same day, we finished Hollywood season one, uh, which I gave a four out of five for. I really, really enjoyed the show. I think it was short and sweet. I think they could have taken their time a little bit more with certain episodes for sure, but I'm not complaining that it was the length that it was. Uh, the characters were really likeable, the ending was great. Had some emotional scenes in there as well, and Jim Parsons was incredible. It, like, seeing Jim Parsons actually be incredible in something. Uh, granted, I've only really seen him in Big Bang Theory, but, you know, Big Bang Theory, <laughs> that's all I really need to say. So yeah, I really enjoyed Hollywood, but I hope they keep it at that. I kind of hope, I think there's rumours that there'll be a season two. I kind of hope there isn't. Just leave it at season one. Season one was so good. Uh, leave it at that. Then on May the 12th, we had two seasons. The first one being Outer Banks Season 1, which I obviously reacted to. I reacted to all these. Westworld, Riverdale, Hollywood, uh, Outer Banks were all ones that I reacted to. And I stand by my rating of this, which was the same as Hollywood, which is a 4 out of 5. Started off a little bit rocky. I was unsure kind of how I was going to feel with the show, like with the first 2-3 episodes, I'd say. But uh, the relationships in there, I love them, like... I don't know, I think the characters in that are so good, but there's that one relationship, if you've seen the reactions, that I just love. Um, the story got a lot more intriguing and interesting as the episodes went on, and I'm actually very excited for season two of that show, so fair play to them. Um, you know, it's, I see it all over the place now, like everyone's talking about Outer Banks still, uh, or at least in the last you know couple of weeks they have, not so much recently, but two weeks ago they were really talking about it a lot. Yeah, very intrigued to see what they do with season two of that. And then on the same day I finished uh, Dead to Me, season two which i actually did a review for on meteor media so if you want to see my full review for dead to me season two a bit more in depth then that'll be linked down below but yeah i loved season one and season two i gave the exact same rating for uh four out of five with i just love the two characters i think they really hold the show together it's like those two characters are what make the show interesting more so than the story even though the story is good uh but yeah there's a couple of things in there that i didn't love by the way i'm excited for season three of that show so four out of five for dead to me season two then on may the 15th we of course had the final episode of the final season 
for How to Get Away with Murder, which I also reacted to. Yo, the views on the finale, madness. <laughs> you guys have smashed the views on the finale of that show. But uh, yeah, the, the final season was probably the weakest season. Uh, I think it ended spectacularly. The last episode, or the last two episodes were amazing. But I just think they wasted a lot of time on useless storylines like Connor and Oliver having threesomes and this relationship that Annalise Keating kind of got in that went nowhere. <laughs> well, not a relationship, but she went on dates with this guy and it just led nowhere. Like, they wasted so much time on shit storylines when they should have been focusing on more, like, giving more time to the ending and, and certain things that, that felt they just could have given more time to. And that was a bit unfortunate. Uh, so I gave a three and a half for the final season of How to Get With Murder and then a four out of five for the show overall. Not the best ending. It, the, the last episode was amazing, but season-wise, not the best it could have been, uh, but still really enjoyable. So, how to go with murder. I will miss that show for sure. And then on May 23rd, I finished House Season 5. <laughs> still going through House and 24, of course. Uh, so yeah, May 23rd was House Season 5, and I really enjoyed Season 5. I think it was a big improvement from Season 4. Uh, focused a lot more on personal issues for House again, but didn't repeat itself, which I liked, and, you know, focus more on the new characters that we were introduced to in Season 4, and certain relationships as well, which I won't spoil, just in case you do plan on watching the show, and it's still a medical drama, so you have the episodic kind of cases going on as well, but most of them were intriguing in this episode, uh, so yeah, how Season 5, and I'm kind of halfway through Season 6 at the moment, and it's looking to possibly be the best season uh, at the moment, we'll see kind of how it does in the second half, but I'm really enjoying Season 6 so far. So yeah, four out of five for season five of House. Um, then on May 27th, we finished Merlin season one, which I'm obviously reacting to as well. And I gave that a four and a half out of five. I loved this season. The characters are so likable. There are like some villains in there that are a bit hit and miss for sure, but just the story, the music, the enjoyment of it that I get out of the show, uh, I loved it. So I gave Merlin season one a four and a half out of ten. Can't wait. I can't wait to share the reactions of season one on YouTube uh, because they're a lot of fun kind of talking to you guys about it on there as well. So yeah, that is everything. That's every season of a show that I did. Obviously we have films next, but overall I'd say the standout for me was Merlin for sure, but Outer Banks because I felt like that was such a short amount. I probably did that in like a week, whereas Merlin's been like a few months now, but it's just I happened to finish it at the end of last month. So I'd say Hollywood was a really great surprise. Dead to Me was basically Dead to Me season one, just you know building on that and really good as well. Outer Banks was a nice surprise. Um, House is House, and Merlin was a huge surprise as well. That was Merlin season one was the best season technically out of all of these, but I'd say Hollywood season one and Outer Banks season one were very impressive as well. So yeah, they are the TV shows. All right, films. We did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 films. So, you know, not a huge amount, but I think that's more than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's more than I did in April. Two of them are the same, though, because I guess one of them is like two watches that I did. So on the 1st of May, I did obviously the half of it, uh, which I reacted to on the channel. So if you want to check out my reaction to that, it should be on the channel somewhere. I gave that a 3 out of 5, but I changed that rating because I actually watched it again on the 18th of May. So I'll just jump ahead to the 18th of May. I took the rating from a 3 to a 2 out of 5. The characters are just kind of trash. It's not funny. <laughs> uh, I don't care for the story or the romances that much. And when I was reacting to it, I was like, okay, cool. It's like, you know, I obviously said in the reaction that I hated the ending and I still stand by that. I feel like the ending ruins uh, the entire film. Um, I think this had the potential to be a three, three and a half, but just re-watching it is not really that great. So I gave it a two out of five overall. Um, and like I said, I watched it twice for some reason <laughs> in this month. I think I just wanted to see, like, is it really a three out of five? And it was not, so that was the half of it. Then on the 4th of May, I watched Hereditary. Again, this was like my fifth rewatch of Hereditary. <laughs> uh, I adore this film. I still stand by it being a five out of five. I think it just executes the idea of horror to perfection and not depending on jump scares it's you know it depends on eeriness and it being creepy and you seeing things in the corner of the screen and little shadows and not like big jump scares oh the fridge closed oh there's a bird oh someone stood behind the door it's, it doesn't depend on shit like that uh you're watching you just like you watch it with lights off at night you'll be creeped out like it's just eerie and it's the only film i think that genuinely kind of 
he sends shivers down your spine and stuff, so Hereditary, uh, still a 5 out of 5, one of my favourite horrors of all time, if not my favourite horror. I think that and the French film Raw, which I have somewhere over there, uh, but Raw's not really creepy, it's just it's kind of in the horror genre, I just love that film, but yeah, anyway, we'll get into the film Raw another day, I'm sure. Then on the 6th of May, I watched three films. First off was Saw 6. <laughs> so I've seen all the Saw films before, but I rewatched uh, Saw 6. I know the Saw films get shat on, and rightly so, but I get so much enjoyment out of them. I think I even watched Saw 5 and Saw 1 at the end of April, and I said that as well there. But I did Saw 6, and on the same day did Saw 3D, <laughs> which was the final Saw film kind of before Jigsaw. And I gave both of them, so Saw 6 was a 3 out of 5, and Saw 3D was also a 3 out of 5 for me. I'm aware that they are bad films. I know they're bad films, but when I put them on, I just have so much fun with them, and I enjoy them for what they are, and I just love the kind of traps in them, and they're so cheesy and bad, but I, I love them, and I've kind of grew up watching those films, so I don't know. I get some enjoyment out of them, and I think that's what matters. Like, I'd rather watch Saw than the half of it, because the half of it is just boring. You know, it's technically a better film, if you want to go technicality, it's a better film than Saw, but I just had more enjoyment than Saw, so I'd rather watch that than uh, the half of it. <laughs> and then on the same day, I watched the film Obsessed. It's got Beyonce and Idris Elba in. Very bad film, but I had, <laughs> I had a lot of fun with it. It was so cheesy and terrible. Uh, I gave it a 2 out of 5 overall. Um, if you just want a film to whack on that's a bit insane, and you got Beyonce kind of doing Beyonce things, then, I mean, watch Obsessed. It, it was fun, but it was also bad. Be warned, it was a bad film. Then on the 7th of May, I watched for the first time uh, Black Swan. I've been meaning to watch this film for so long. It's obviously from the director who directed uh, Mother with Jennifer Lawrence in, which a lot of people don't like, but I really, I really enjoyed the film Mother. So I've been meaning to watch Black Swan for a while, and I loved it. <laughs> I love this film. It's definitely got some weird, creepy moments in there for sure, but the final 15, 20 minutes are so good. Natalie Portman's maybe best performance, from what I've seen at least. She was really, really good in this film. So it was Mila Kunis, actually. She was really good in this film. And yeah, definitely kind of a bit creepy and weird at times, but it, it worked for the film. And as I said, that last kind of performance in the, the last 15 minutes was amazing. So I gave Black Swan a four and a half out of five. Close to perfect. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed that film a lot. A lot more than I thought it was going to. I thought maybe it'd be like a four, maybe a three and a half. But uh, four and a half out of five. Then on the 12th of May... I rewatched the film, I think this is the third time I've seen this film, but Django Unchained, Quentin Tarantino's Django, uh, which I stand by being a 5 out of 5. I think it's a perfect film. The pacing is amazing. The action is incredible. Acting is also, obviously with all, all Tarantino films, the acting is outstanding, especially from Leonardo DiCaprio, I feel, and uh, Christoph Waltz. He is so good in that film. Um, Quentin Tarantino film, you know, I love most of his films, I think there's a couple in there that I don't love, but I love majority of his films, and this might be my favourite, along with Kill Bill, Volume 1, I can never decide which one I prefer, I also love, like, Inglorious Bastards, Pulp Fiction, of course, uh, Kill Bill Volume 2 I do really enjoy as well, but I think Volume 1's definitely better, so, but yeah, Django is a 5 out of 5, amazing film, definitely, definitely recommend if you have not seen that. Then, on the 14th of May, I watched for the first time Long Shot, starring Seth Rogen and Charlize Theron. It's a rom-com, uh, but the, the, the comedy works for it, it's not like a rom-com where the comedy's kind of shit. There are some shit jokes in there, for sure, uh, but it works for the most part. The only thing I didn't love about the film is I didn't really buy into the romance between the two. They were both good in the film, Seth Rogen and Charlie Theron, and their characters as well, were both really good. It's just the roman the romance was a bit... I don't know, it felt so easy. <laughs> in it. I don't know, it was weird if you've seen the film. But some people really loved their romance in that film, and for me it's just kind of like... The jokes were funny, and I liked the characters, uh, but overall I gave it a three and a half out of five. It was a, it was a good film, I enjoyed it. Uh, then on the 16th of May, which is technically the last film I watched, because on the 18th of May I did the half of it, uh, for the second time. On the 16th of May, I did Leon the Professional. Oh my god, this film. I've seen I've seen it before, like maybe five times. I've seen it a lot, but not for a long time. I think I watched it like three times when I was really young. And then another time, maybe five years ago. And I'd always enjoyed it. I gave it like a four. Not I've changed the rating now, but I used to give it like a four out of five. I remember really enjoying it, but now re-watching it. There's not a bad scene in this film. I love it to pieces. I think 
Yeah, so the, I think it, it was a thing where when they showed it to American audiences, they were a bit weirded out by the relationship between uh, Leon and Natalie Portman's character in the film. It's very clear why Natalie Portman's character is acting the way she is, and Leon's, you know, not the smartest guy at times. So there are like some scenes in there that could be perceived as like a little bit odd, but when you know the meaning behind it and why the characters are acting the way they are, and that's just like one part of the film. There's also so a lot more going on. I, I love it. I think the music's amazing. The action is great. The kind of bond between Leon and uh, Nat Natalie Portman's character. I'm blanking on her name for some reason. That uh, what's her name? Shit. No, that's going to annoy me. I need to, I need to remember her name. But uh, yeah, their bond I I love throughout the film. There's like one scene where I was a bit like, okay, this could could get really weird, and we don't need it to. But it didn't go down that road. <laughs> Thankfully, Jesus, imagine if it did. It would just ruined the entire film. Yeah, Matilda. Matilda. Okay. Gary Oldman as well. Oh, Gary Oldman is so good in this film. He's amazing. Um, it's one, maybe one of his best acted films that I've seen. I've not seen a lot of Gary Oldman films, but uh, he's really good in it, so. And I love the ending as well. I just think this, every scene in this film works so well. Uh, so I changed my rating from a 4 to a 5 out of 5. I think it's, I think it's a perfect film. I, I, I love it. I love it a lot more now than I did kind of watching it as a kid and the last time I watched it like I said about five years ago yeah that's everything that I watched in May I'd say the best film was Leon the Professional easily but Hereditary and Django are obviously also masterpieces um, I think all three of those like Leon the Professional, Django and Hereditary are incredible masterpiece uh, incredible masterpieces and Black Swan was very close like that was very close to being a masterpiece for me uh, a lot of shit like I say saw films I have fun with but they are bad films I'm not denying that the half of it was actually garbage. Obsessed with gar obsessed was garbage, but I had fun with it. I had more fun with Obsessed than I did the half of it, because it was just like one of those sit and have a laugh kind of films. Um, and Long Shot was a good film. It was a good comedy, but it's not one I'd really watch again anytime soon. Um, so yeah, the best films were Leon, Django, and Hereditary for sure. Closely followed by Black Swan. So yeah, there we go, guys. That's everything that I watched and played. I think I did pretty well in in the May. Hopefully, I don't know if I'll do that well in June. <laughs> Even though, granted, Final Fantasy is close to ending soon, and we have obviously Last of Us Part 2 as well, so I'll speak about that in the next video, because I would have completed it probably by the time I get around to doing that one. But yeah, there we go, guys. Thank you for watching. Leave a like if you want. Let me know what you watched and played in June, May. I'm getting my months mixed up now. Let me know what you watched and played in May, and I'll see you next time for the June video. Until then, peace.